Hi. What we're looking at here is a mandala of sorts from our friend Cece. She sent this to me almost a year and a half ago when we first got started. Uh, Cece considers herself a PWP. That's a painter with Parkinson's. I love that. Um, so I just wanted to point this out. Um, I am Mo Onstead with the Unsteady Hand. Um, we'll be spending the next 15, 20 minutes together talking about mandalas, doing a little deeper dive than we did the first five minute video we talked about. Um, I also wanna point out that what I'm gonna do today is just how I make mandalas and kind of what they mean to me. It's different for everybody. That's the cool thing about art. We've talked about this a lot, our creativity or imagination or playfulness. I use the word art, sorry. Um, Anyway, I'll be sharing a lot of links on the website to other people making mandalas on YouTube because there are some amazing videos. To me, a mandala is a journey or a map of sorts of a journey. Um, and in that map, um, typically in a mandala, this would represent the center of the universe, so to speak, at least the way I think about it. And this would represent the edge of the universe or a destination in our life or in a journey. Um, and that journey can be a straight line here it could be a couple of lines to that point. It could be a curved line to this point. It could be a spiral. It could be a wavy line. There's no rules to how we get to these points, right? So this mandala is somehow, when you're thinking about it, you can think about a journey uh, getting from one point to another point and how do you represent that symbolically? So we're just gonna start with a mandala and we'll kind of talk about the pieces and the parts as we go. Um, so this is somewhat intimidating, I think, as a blank white sheet of paper or a blank white circle. So what I do to get started uh, for a couple reasons is one, I just put a dot in the center. Um, and that one gives me a place to start, a, a circular pattern around. It also, when we talk kind of metaphorically about what is a mandala, it's the beginning of my journey to the outside, to the end point, which could be out here somewhere. Um, and so we're going to fill up this thing with symbolism, like things that we think of as symbols in this world. You know, some of them are religious symbols. There's different religious symbols. Um, there's that yin yang. There's the Christian, Catholic. Um, there's all kinds of symbolism that we can use. Um, we also will fill this up with patterns. So patterns could be dashes of arrows. Patterns could be just dashes. Patterns could be a row of circles. So those are the patterns. And then also we're gonna talk about layers of meaning. And that's kind of getting a little metaphorical, but we'll have layers in this mandala um, like that. So start with that mark. You can also, you know, if it's easier for you, start with a mark like this, forget the dot, start with four marks. Just make a mark on the page and don't worry about it. Once I have a mark on the page, um, this is where mandalas can be kind of meditative and kind of mindful. I just start to repeat patterns over and over and over in a circular manner. I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll start doing it and it probably will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a square in every one of these blanks. And what I found is easier than trying to put a square in four different directions. And you see my squares aren't that great, and that's okay. I like to spin the paper because then I'm drawing the same square with the same motor movements every time. And for somebody with Parkinson's like us, that might be helpful. And then to do that thing, I'll just do the same thing. I'll repeat a pattern. And this one I'm going to do on the tip and over the square with a circle, right? And so these are just some symbols that we can use um, that are real basic that really have no particular meaning per se, but they're just kind of look cool. And then I might finish up and I'll put some arrows in here. And right now I'm using the O3, which some of you will have. And now I kind of lost my spot here and now I'm gonna go here. So you see, I'm just repeating this pattern until I get back to where I started. And you can see it's starting to build a mandala and that's kind of cool and that's what we're doing. We're just building a circular design to start with. It doesn't have to have a deep meaning. It can just look cool or it can have a really deep meaning. It doesn't matter. So back to my one that doesn't really have a deep meaning and it may or may not look cool. I'll switch pens so you can kind of see the difference. This is an 08. It's much fatter. So if I draw that same arrow, you'll see it's a much fatter line. Um, and I like arrows a lot, especially when we're talking about journeys and destinations. And you can see how these arrows are getting harder for me to draw if I don't spin the paper. And if I just spin the paper, it's much easier. And I've lost some of my symmetry here now, and I'm okay with that. Mandalas don't have to be symmetrical, and they don't have to be geometric. They can be loose. I've got one here that's kind of cool. This is actually a mandala that somebody did by tapping, um, which for somebody with Parkinson's might work really, really well. Um, so anyway, we got that. So now talking about some of the, you all got three Sharpies in your kit of random colors. I got three Sharpies of random colors picked up by Michael over here. And I got the preppy colors. I don't know if you guys remember the preppy handbook. I do, but I grew up in the 80s. All right, so I'm gonna start 
with this blue Sharpie. It's one of my skinny Sharpies. I wanna show you a few little tricks that I figured out with Sharpies and these pieces of paper. I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret. These are coffee filters. <laughs> they work for an AeroPress. Anyway, so what I found is if I push and hold the pen down, you'll see it's gonna bloom in there. And you can fill spaces with round dots by pressing and holding. Now you'll see, I'll do that with this. It takes a long time. And then I'll do the same thing with a fatter pen. We're gonna use the pink, I guess, since we're doing preppy. And the fat one you'll see goes really fast. And I'm gonna just make a couple of marks. I'm doing the tips of the arrows and the arrow and the triangles. And you can see by holding it down, I get kind of a round dot. Now if I just tap, I get these small dots. And if I hold the pen down longer, you'll see I'll get bigger dots. And I'm gonna speed this up right now because you don't need to watch me make bigger dots for the next minute. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this pink pen. I'm gonna pick up this uh, skinny pen again. I'm gonna show you some of the symbols that I use a lot in my mandalas. Um, I use these arrows, I use the circles. You can use closed circles and open circles. And you see I'm just going around and I'm moving the paper as I do this. Um, we can put some hearts in there, I like hearts. Kind of a hopeless romantic probably. You make for nice love notes on an anniversary or just a random note. Um, you could do something as simple as a plus. I just put three between those hearts. I'll put three between these hearts. You see, if I don't spin the paper, my pluses get all wanky. So if I spin the paper, they stay kind of uniform. They don't have to be uniform. I kind of like the uniformity in my mandalas, but they don't need to be uniform. Like if I show you this one, I made this one as an example for our first video. Um, there's not a lot of uniformity to that, but there's a little bit. It's kind of a happy medium. Controlled chaos, maybe. So we've got those ideas. Now, a couple of things we can do with the pen. I'm gonna go back to the skinny blue pen. Um, if you draw a fast line, the, the, the line will be skinny. So if I draw these lines fast out from the center, you'll see they're super, super skinny. And I'm going really fast. I'm not speeding this up. I do speed up the camera from time to time. I'm not speeding up there now. Now, if I go slow, I'm gonna draw a line on either side of that, or just on the right side of that, I guess. You'll see it makes a nice fat line. And that's by going slow. And you see, I'm kind of getting out of my symmetry a little bit here. And I'm okay with that. It's, you know, that's okay. Now I'm doing kind of a fast line there. That's okay. I'm going to slow it down again. I have a hard time slowing it down, as we all know. Um, so that's the fat line, skinny line. The other thing we can do, I'll pick up the green pen or whatever color this is, turquoise. We'll start with a dot and pull it away fast. And we kind of get this dot with a line. So we dot and then pull it away fast. And of course, I pick up the pen that doesn't have any ink in it. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I pulled the fast one in. I picked up that green pen and I didn't check it. It was dead. So what I was showing you is if you press, I'll be putting in the middle of this dot and hold and then zip out. Um, you get kind of a dot with a streak in it. And these are coming off the page. You're not going to see. I'll do them kind of going around. So I'm kind of flicking it and I'm getting that pointed line, right? And I, sometimes I'll make that center really dense. So in theory, this could be done. Um, to me, it kind of looks like kind of a sappy Hallmark Valentine's card, but it's also hand-drawn and I guarantee you, if you gave this to your significant other, they will melt. But I'm gonna throw one more color on here just for giggles to fill it up. Um, I'm not a big fan of white space. Um, this is one that I made a couple weeks ago. Um, I filled up almost all the white space. This is one that I made, and it's a little sappy, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. This is one I made a couple weeks ago as well. I filled up almost all the white space, and I only used dots by holding the pen down and letting it bleed. Um, and that's all I did on that one. I didn't use any black. I didn't use any lines. So I, I just want to say it's done. So I'm actually, I was going to use this blue pen on here. I'm going to call this done. There's no reason it's done other than I'm just done with it. I'm gonna start with a new piece of paper here in just a second. I'll slide that in there. All right, so before we uh, move on to our next mandala, I'm going to throw a few more words out here. Um, these are some things we can think about when we are uh, making our mandalas. 
what direction are we headed towards from the center or whatever point we pick? You know, where is that point that we pick? Um, which direction are we going? Are we going up, down, to the left, to the right? Are we going in circles? How, where are we moving? Another thing we can think about is, are there connections to be made? Are we connecting the dots? Rather than moving in a direction, are we making connections between things? You can think about that. Another thing we can think about maybe is, is that mandala representing some sort of passage rather than necessarily, um, and it's more of a unilateral one direction mandala that moves from one edge of the universe to the other rather than from the center, right? So there's all kinds of options. I want you guys to be really free and fluid with this. Um, I find these like meditative, practicing mindfulness. Um, so take a moment to like really think about what you're doing and slow down. I mean, we're good at that. We have Parkinson's, it's slowing down. This is an opportunity to do it on purpose, right? So we can be purposefully slow and mindful. Um, this builds a thing that we always talk about in neuroplasticity. We'll do a whole lab where we talk about neuroplasticity, I think. So we talk about mandalas being round, um, and they are round by, by definition, but I have this one here. We'll put that down here. Um, this isn't a mandala, but maybe it is. We've got a circle here that starts it all, a point in the middle of the universe. Um, this is square. Um, it's got patterns. It's got some symbolism. Um, to me, it's symbolic. Um, so I just wanted to throw this out that, you know, don't get locked into the idea that this drawing has to be um, circular. It, it, mandalas typically are, but if you find yourself wanting to lean towards more angular things, go for it. Have fun with it. So I also want to tell a little quick story about um, this drawing. I drew this about six months ago, I believe, and I showed it to my mom and I was mentioning that I probably didn't have Parkinson's because when you look at these lines, you wouldn't think that somebody with had Parkinson's made this. And she kind of mentioned that it was kind of almost like I was redefining what it means to draw with Parkinson's. And I thought that was really kind of a neat idea. And then something popped into my mind or her mind. One of us came up with a mind reimagining what it is to draw with Parkinson's. And I thought, what about reimagining Parkinson's as our uh, mission statement? It's kind of short, kind of sweet, but it's pretty cool. So that's how we came up with the mission statement, reimagining Parkinson's, was this exact drawing um, when my mom was commenting on um, redefining what it means to draw with Parkinson's. If you look closely in here, you'll see there's some squiggly lines. Most of my lines are pretty squiggly, but in the big picture, it looks pretty much like I don't have Parkinson's, right? Who knows what that's all about? We, we do know that it is a resting tremor and I was doing an action at this point. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. That's the story. I'm gonna talk a little bit about ghosts and a little bit about watercolor backgrounds. And um, then we're gonna wrap it up, I think. Um, I will put lots of examples on the website. That's theunsteadyhand.org. Um, my email, I'll say it now and I'll say it again, is mo, M-O, at theunsteadyhand.org. And I'm gonna show you real quick about what ghosts are and what that means. I'll pick a couple of bright colors so you kind of get the idea. Uh, blue and orange are complementary colors. Uh, some of you know what that is, some of you don't. We'll talk about that at the Nether Lab. Um, the reason we're gonna use these watercolors now to do this is in your next kit, um, next month, we're gonna do abstract watercolors with these pens and the new watercolors you'll be getting next month. How exciting is that? Um, anyway, so a ghost, if you take two of these and put them one on top of the other, and I'm gonna tap them together so they're kind of together, and then you do your dots, this works the best for a ghost. I'm just gonna do a very small ghost and then show you two examples of ghosts, or maybe three. So if I do those five dots with the orange, and then I do these five dots and I'm pressing and holding for a while, and you'll see why in a second. And then I'll do a slow line with the blue and a slow line with the blue. There's, there's that passage we were talking about. And then when I open this up, you'll see there's actually two that match. One is the ghost, one is the, the real one. Sometimes the ghost ends up super, super cool. So I got a couple examples of that right here. Um, we saw the heart before. This is the ghost of the heart. So this was on top of this. This is kind of a lighter, more abstract version of this more succinct kind of distinct colors. That's kind of cool. And then this is the other one I showed you that has a ghost with it. This was drawn on top of this one. I love the ghost of the, they're both super cool, um, but this one is the original. This was the ghost that was underneath it. Okay, so one last thing as we wrap up, I wanna show you ways to use this watercolors that you'll be getting next month with these coffee filters. I put these two down. These are two that are finished. This one has some black dots on it. There was actually the ghost under something else. Um, that's fine. I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. You might've noticed these uh, paints appear through the magic of video. They are now right there, as long with this magic water. 
and the magic brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack, remember we just talked about ghosts. I can make a lot of these all at one time. I'm gonna stack about five or six. I guess I've got about six, so I'm gonna get rid of these. I've got six, I'm gonna put them in a nice little pattern here. And there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna grab another couple for fun. And I'll show you another little trick we can do. Uh, so I'm gonna pick up a color. Uh, Michael, what color am I gonna pick? Red. 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 So I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of really, really wet red. And I'm just going to put this together. And I'm going to hold these down. And I'm just going to push that brush down there and I'm going to hold it. And you'll see it'll bleed. And then I'll get some more water and I can make that bleed even more with lots of water. And then I'll pick another color for me. I'll just pick blue because I like blue. And I'll make a line with blue. And I'll get a lot more water. Right? They're called water colors for a reason. And you'll see these start to bow and buckle, which is kind of a drag at first. And then I can actually blend these. We've talked about this in labs before, but for those of you who are new, you'll kind of figure this out. We'll do this next time with watercolors. And then I'll grab a little green. And just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to leave a little white space on here. Lots of water again. Remember, we're getting a lot of water to soak through to the ghost. I'm going to overlap these a little bit. All right, so that's, I'm leaving the white space. Normally I cover the whole thing like these two were covered. Um, and then you'll see as I peel these off one at a time, each one is a reduction from the one above it. Um, you'll see the white space gets more dramatic and the color gets a little more faded and a little more. But those are cool. Those all could be used for mandala. You could put a dot here on that one to start your mandala. You could put a dot here on this one to start your mandala. You could put a dot here and go in a circular around that. So there's really no rules. So we're going to leave it at that. Um, once again, my name is Mo. I'm with The Unsteady Hand. Uh, we are at theunsteadyhand.org if you want to come to our webpage, which you should because you're already here because you're watching this video. But search around, look around. There's a lot more to be seen, a lot more to be had. You can email me at mo, M-O, at The Unsteady Hand. And until next time, which will be abstract watercolors using these pens and your new watercolors in your bag next month. All right, so thanks for joining us. Uh, tune in next month. I'll be delivering packets again like I did this month. Uh, they will contain a different project. Uh, they will incorporate these pens. I will tell you that. So don't lose these pens. And I will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Michael. He does all the work behind the scenes. I want to give him a big shout out. Uh, and it wouldn't happen without him. So that's about all we got. Have a great month. I hope I see you soon. Bye-bye.